Meeting to order, please rise for the flag. Yes, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I move to uh, remove roll call from the board meeting agenda as it doesn't follow our current policy for board meeting agenda. I'll second that. Okay. There's been a motion and made. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, approval of the board meeting minutes for November 8th, 2023. I'll move for the approval of board minute board meeting minutes for November 8th, 2023. I'll second that. It's been a motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Uh, Aye. Okay. Opposed? <laughs> motion carries. Excuse you. Uh, consent agenda. I'll move for the approval of the consent agenda. A second. There's been a motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion? I do have um, one comment in regards to um, new hires. I know that we had talked before and I just wanted to bring it up again and um, I'm not sure how we should address it, but um, if we're putting start dates on before it actually comes to the board for approval, uh, why are we approving it? Yeah, there should be that nobody begins until the board has approved um, an employee. Sometimes we're in an area where we need to have somebody start or common practice is bringing an employee in as a substitute until we reach the board meeting date. And then the first official day would be like tomorrow. So I think uh, further verification on board um, start dates and having employees come in as a substitute until that time. Is, uh, and no letters should be issuing, and all letters issued should be verification of uh, per board approval. So um, I think uh, we're out at the uh, board, uh, board conference, but I think there's verification on those letters when they come out that uh, an employee cannot start until after the board is approved would be fine. Great, thank you. Is there any additional discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, uh, communications and comments. Anyone from ETO? ESP? Papa? Admin? Okay, uh, unfinished business. We have approval to adopt policy 2230, transition to kindergarten program first reading. Um, I think there was comments to kind of modify the WASDA policy to bring us into alignment. Uh, we we're just seeking approval to um, have our operations transitional kindergarten in alignment with WAC 392-425-010 um, on the screening and practices on how students would have access to transitional kindergarten. And as we stand to read it now, it looks like we made sure we struck through and who lack access to other early learning group settings, um, as long as everyone's okay with that. We can go ahead and move for a motion. I move for the approval to adopt policy 2230 transition to kindergarten program, first reading. Second. And a motion made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Approval of policy 2411, a certificate of educational competency, second and final reading. Uh, just, uh, just seeking approval on the next three regarding, uh, these are second readings. There was no edit in the last uh, policy, just bringing us in alignment to adoption of the new RCWs from the last legislative session. We move for the approval of policy 2411, certificate of educational competency, second and final reading. I'll second that. Then a motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Approval of policy 3231, child, uh, whoops, student records, second and final reading. I'll move for the approval of policy 3231, student records, second and final reading. Second. 
And the motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Um, approval of policy 3421, child abuse and neglect, second and final reading. I'll move to approve policy 3421, uh, child abuse and neglect, second and final reading. Well, second. There's been a motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Yeah, I had one question. So at the very end, grammatically, I think it says, uh, let's see, however, failing to report the incident may result in criminally, regardless of whether is that correct or should it be criminal liability, regardless of whether the, is it semantics? I don't have it. Give me one second. Please. I see what you mean. You see what I mean? Yep, I sure do. <clears throat> paragraph are you in? It is the uh, first to last paragraph, last sentence. However, highlighted. Yep. I think if we, if you would like, I think we can go back and reread that and make an edit. Okay. Um, so I would uh, recommend a voting no on approval we might bring back to a first reading because it does is okay. a little clunky on that yeah okay i got a motion to table i'll move to table okay i'll well, second and yeah, there's been a motion to table the discussion until we can refine the language uh is there any further discussion all in favor aye, aye. aye. opposed motion carries uh, new business approval of the 2023-24 VIBA agreements for EPO, EESP, EAA, ECOPA, and e exempt. Um, each bargaining group has the ability to bring forward a as a vote on a whole uh, VIBA agreement. So we're just seeking those um, those uh, um, association approved. Uh, we're seeking approval of those association approved VIBA agreements. As you can see, I think uh, in those MOUs, each association president has signed. I move for the approval of 2023-24 VIVA agreements. Second. And a motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Do we have to abstain from this vote? Should there no. I would. No. You don't benefit from the VIVA agreement. Only if you benefit monetarily do you have to sustain and there's no benefit for you. Okay, then, then we vote. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's just saying that we're not matching anything or. Okay, so there's been a motion made and seconded. Is there any additional conversation, uh, any additional discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Approval to accept donation of instruments to Emma High School band program from Bill Rutherford Estate. We have the letter from Marilyn Curl. Marilyn, would you like to? Um, as I said in the letter, my family is extremely musical and over the years, um, my mom and her siblings and other family members have collected a ton of musical instruments over their life. And when my uncle passed, um, his request was that the instruments be donated to family who wanted them. And so my cousin did that and had uh, three instruments left and a keyboard. And so um, I suggested maybe she look at a band program to donate those two. And she said, go ahead, get right on that. And so I said, okay, I'll take care of it. So um, we just have a saxophone and two clarinets that uh, we know that um, my uncle would love to donate to the band program rather than seeing them sold. Wonderful. Marilyn, the letter is from you. I wrote the letter on behalf of my cousin, Jackie. Would you you'd like to make sure that we can send your cousin, Jackie? Mm -hmm. your I can do that. Can you help us work with the, that letter to her or get the car to her? I will get you the address. I appreciate okay. it. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I move to approve to accept the donation of instruments to the Elma High School Band Program. I'll second. It's been a motion made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? 
Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you again. Uh, approval to accept donations and sport banners. Clark? Uh, these are, well, there's a number of things. These uh, are banners that have the history of this, their particular sport on, whether the league championships, district, and state placings. Now, the reason we don't have all the sports covered here is because the research takes a while and they're going to be privately funded. We have three up right now. Um, I have pictures on the phone, but you're welcome to come into the gym and check them out. We will eventually have the uh, west wall covered. That's the side with the bleachers on it. But the boosters or private means will fund these banners. Mr. Mark Caden just got the uh, boys cross country done just now. I just got it, so that'll be up soon. Were you holding up models? I feel like you had some models, or do you mind sending the board copies of what they would look like? These, okay. yeah, they're we, on, have yeah, we have them. Perfect. Those are the models, right? Yeah, they yeah. It's one image. I think they're kind of even better than mine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they look, they look nice. I've been in the gym as recently, and they, they look really nice. There we go. Is um, this time to have discussion? We have to wait to the no, okay. So I just no, no, yep. Do we? Yeah, yeah. Legally, yep. I think we do. Do we yeah. need to make a motion? Yeah. I move for the approval to accept the donation of sports banners. I'll second. There's been a motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Yes, I have this question. Okay. Ron, um, these banners, um, just out of curiosity, how come we're not using our sign shop to make these? Because I know that probably five years ago, um, I was on a committee with Rob Jansen and um, there was, I think you were actually on that committee where um, there was uh, this, this information was being collected on the sports stuff and that we were gonna use the sign shop um, at the school and keep everything local. So I was just curious. A local what? sign shop, I can answer that. Okay. Um, we use our sign shop for a few projects and the cost for the internal sign shop is exceeding external but, um, external okay. projects. So as the cost of our own internal, internal vendors are coming at a higher and higher inflated rate, it's actually more cost effective for Ron to use BSN. Okay. That's issue one. Second two is this is going to be a vinyl printed, so there's no stickers or anything falling off, right? The science shop currently will print layered vinyl and kind of stick on. This will be embedded. This will be sublimated into the vinyl, so it'll actually be printed so that the, the wear and tear and okay. the life of these banners will be remarkably long. Okay. Um, the only other thing I'm, I want to <clears throat> mention is that it kind of goes what I mentioned earlier in um, approving things and and they're already happened. Um, if these are already hanging in the gym, don't get me wrong, I think it's a great idea and I absolutely love it. But if they're already hanging in the gym and you're telling us that and you're coming and asking for permission, it kind of backs us in a corner if there was an issue. Um, a lot of times, you know, the board gets blamed for this or the board gets blamed for that. And so I would just ask that in the future um, for anything that's gonna get, that needs board approval, that we actually approve it before it happens. Can I speak to that one more thing about the being embedded? The originals, what we got on the wall are embedded, but if we win the <clears throat> state championship next year in basketball, that's right. they will send us vinyl with that font to put on. Okay. So that's how we, in, in addition, keep going. But as you know, if the boys win, if they go to state again, we are out of room. So we're buying another one. <laughs> Well, thanks for answering that, that question. That was going to be mean. my next question. Was, yeah. So, what happens? So uh, do we send them the back? Why was the, you know, when we have to update it, but the originals are supplemented. Okay. And I don't think from a distance you will be able to tell the difference. So, uh, Jamie, I think uh, that's a fair on like when we're moving the, the adoption. Um, on a donation, I don't think there's a protocol as far as having it come ahead of time, but more of a courtesy because if you deny the approval, then we would have a purchase banner that someone might not know what they're doing with. So I think just getting a chance to just bring it in ahead of time, make sure that we can respect all parties. I think also having an opportunity to have a boys, girls, and football boosters and all the organizations who have donated these once they've all come in, an opportunity like once we're up, the ability to kind of thank them. Yeah would be important as well. Mm -hmm. 
<clears throat> okay, is there any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, approval for high school winter cheer to travel to Seaside, Oregon for basketball tournament December 14th through 17th, 2023. Uh, Mr. Park. <clears throat> this is a not to be done before, but for this year, they're going to play 100% their own way. And this was going to be used as a team building and a team bonding experience for the girls who haven't had a chance to go to camp yet. Or, you know, so they wanted to use this time. They were invited by the uh, basketball boosters to do this. And I thought it would be a good time for them to bond together. 100% paid by outside sources. Oh, that's what I, I missed. Okay. It's funded for these every this aspect. group of these girls to go. Okay. They just need our permission to travel out of state. Overnight out of state. Overnight out of state. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll move to approve uh, the high school winter cheer to travel to Seaside, Oregon for basketball tournament December 14th through 17th, 2023. I'll second that. And a motion made. And seconded, is there any further discussion? Well, there isn't any discussion, I'm sorry. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Approval of resolution 5-2324, replacement of educational programs and operation levy. We um, ran uh, community levy information forums. Uh, uh, Mr. Smith, I you kind of joined us and didn't feel that we had overwhelming support to um, change the levy that we've been running for the last few years. So we are seeking approval on our levy resolution, which will be filed with the county um, um, auditor's office on uh, um, to be on the, both uh, Mason County and Grace Harbor County. Um, so we are seeking to be on the February 13th ballot for our replacement levy. Again, the levy makes up a good 20% of our operational budget. So um, we are seeking approval on that levy. I'll move for the approval of the resolution. I don't have my glasses. Is it five? Five, five, okay, five. Four. <laughs> Let's dig into my purse. Okay, five, two, three, two, four, replacement educational programs and operation levy. I'll second that. And a motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion? It's more of a comment than discussion, but I would really encourage the community that when we have these engagements to please come out and give your opinion. Um, there wasn't very many people at either one of them. There was a lot more at the first one, according to Chris, but the second one, there wasn't much for turnout. So it's really hard to get the community's voice other than us having a conversation with other, other constituents. So I would just, from now on, please come out. Otherwise we cannot get your voice heard. Yeah. Maybe tell us. Yeah. And it's important because it does cost the district money to put them on the ballots. Right. And, um, and so it'd definitely be nice to know that what our community wants. Correct. There's been a motion made and seconded. Is there any further discussion or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, approval of Barb Snyder Personal Service Agreement for 2023-24, Mr. Scroggins. Yeah, so uh, Barb Snyder has uh, she retired from school district last year, taught here for many, many years. She is a phenomenal teacher. She's very knowledgeable about all of our systems. And uh, she's going to come alongside and support some of our new teachers as they uh, work on all the different aspects of teaching. And so we have a we uh, created a personal services contract with her and everything. She's willing to do that, and we simply need her approval for that. And then we can we can uh, begin that. She will uh, work with, uh, with three. I think we have three brand new teachers uh, between now and the end of the school year. She'll have a, a schedule of time that she comes in. It's a defined amount uh, of funding and everything. It's all laid out. So. It's going to be a tremendous asset for our school. And from what I understand, those hours will be paid through LAP? Uh, title four. Title four. Okay. Dollars, yes.
I move for the approval of Barb Snyder personal service agreement for the 2023-2024 school year. I'll second. It's been a motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Well, that's the guy with comments and questions today. Uh, so as a former uh, retiree, this doesn't violate any anything, right? It's coming back as a consultant. I was curious about that myself when I was reading it. Is there any concerns sure. about that? It's not an ongoing contract. Uh, Ms. Snyder is coming in to work with some of our teachers that we're needing additional okay. support. We had a large hiring class. And the state year. allows them to come back okay. for 867 hours. Okay, I figured that was probably the case, but I thought it asked a question. Good question. Is this something that uh, we would foresee as sustainable for I mean, to me, it's a best practice. I never feel like we support our new hires at the level that they should. Um, do we view this as a, a just a standard best practice, um, not necessarily as an intervention, but more as a best practice? I would kind of put it in the middle. We're always going to look to cover in-house. But again, the last couple of years, we've had a large amount of retirements mm -hmm. and we've had a large amount of new staff onboarding. So our numbers are definitely um, in an atypical rate of um, new employees joining our district. So um, I don't know if I would say this would be an on. So would it be an ongoing practice as needed? As needed. When we're out of our in-district, in we have in the CBA and in the contract to provide in-house support. Um, this would be an additional layer of intervention support. There's been a motion made and second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion <clears throat> carries. Approval of the ETO VIBA MOU. Just like the other uh, VIBA agreements, this is just a uh, copy of the ETO MOU. No, I have a question on that because in new business section A, the very first one listed is mm -hmm. the ETO. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is another part to their VIBA. Um, as exempt employees, we have the option, well, not the option, we have voted and done for years, um, contributing to like a health savings account. Mm -hmm. But this one is not one you have to use up within a year. It is available at retirement where you can put your sick leave in and use to pay medical after you retire. This is what ETO would like to start doing. Do we have like a flex spending before? Because an HSA doesn't, they don't run out. You can use them whenever. This they is, carry yeah, every month. So this isn't like a flex. Everybody has to Perfect. put in the same amount. Mm -hmm. Everybody has to do it. Nobody can opt out. Okay. And this is a new uh, for them, practice for ETO. Mm -hmm. For them, yes, it is new. And once this starts, Lisa, is this a... Uh, goes on forever. Forever. So once they've initiated this process, this is what they're locking they into. they not to do it anymore. Okay. By majority of their group. Okay. I'll move for the approval of the ETO Viva MOE. I have oh. one more question. And maybe I'm just getting hung up on semantics <laughs> here, but it, it says health reimbursement arrangement. Like, how, how does that come about? How does that Well, work? if I go to the doctor right now, I can submit that bill to my account and they reimburse me. Okay. Or I just I need to have a definition as a retirement. person who works in the investment world. I, I, I'm not familiar with the HRA comment. So I just wanted to know how that works, but, but they can use it. And then after said 59 and a half, it's really kind of a, a spigot to turn on and use as they wish yeah. later on kind it's of thing. their choice to use it yearly or they okay. can keep saving it until sure. they retire. Sure, perfect. Okay, just want to understand it. Okay. I'll move the approval of the ETO Viva MOU. Second. And a motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion or further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Enrollment, Mr. Nesmith. I will be right there. Yeah. Are you here? I'm. Our enrollment, we were a little down from our October count on our in-student population. And when we take into account our um, daily open doors student population, our enrollment is sitting at, I'm almost there, 1680. That includes our 49 students for open doors. We do have a 55 student split within Running Start. 
Um, but we're finding that our running start number, again, that's 11 down from last year as more students are engaging in our dual credit opportunities. So we are pulling more and more running start students as they can engage in our dual credit opportunities. So that used to be 66. Now we're down to last year, now we're down to 55. An open doors enrollment of 49 for 1,680.26 Alma students. Is that, was that the, sorry, was that the TK? TK, yes, we are 2.67. The reason why is, is we, we grow that. So that's, that has continual enrollment until the class fills in January. Hmm. Oh, okay. We only enroll students as they turn five. All right. The more may be attending, but we can't claim them. Greg, I don't think we have more. It's, all, it's based on a reduction average, so it's going to show low. You're going to see the TK number go up every month after month after month. Mm -hmm. There could be like eight kids in the class right now, but only the true five-year-olds are getting funded. No, we're only okay. enrolling can't start five five. that term five after September 1. Oh. Mm -hmm. So the program starts off smaller, and then October it grows a little larger. November grows a lot and, and it, it mm -hmm. goes small. So okay. you're going to see that mm -hmm. average because this is based upon your monthly average. Five. It will grow five exponentially. So that number is lower because we don't take a flat count on the month of September. Okay. So 2.67 will show a low rate and then it'll grow month after month quicker. So our TK number is the one that grows fastest. But, that, but just for clarification, because I know every district's doing it slightly different, Elma is not, Elma's not taking a child that is in November who turns five in January. They could not start until January. Correct. We're only taking kids after they turn five. Okay. Even though, um, like we're going to pay for that teacher whether they have two kids in the class or eight kids in the class for 16, because right? Because of the laws around the funding, we can only take them when they're five. Anybody younger who needs help would go preschool. Those are basic ed fund requirements? This is yes. the new requirements okay. that came out under right. the TK program. For this year? Yes, they did okay. come out this year. Because last year people took... Yeah, we took court. I don't know that we took anybody. Else. We Elm oh, might not have, but right. some other districts, districts were on a sure. hybrid married ECAP program. <laughs> some districts were on okay. a married um, special education TK program. We already have a strong ECAP right. program and a strong ECAP. So without reducing the numbers in those areas, we run just a straight five year olds. Okay. Straight five year old program. Perfect. Good. Thank you. And Lisa, what was our student enrollment number that we? Budgeted around, do you recall? Is it on the? Not in this document. Not on the, this one, now. I want to say it was 1584, 1561, maybe 1561. You're asking me when I've been looking at a lot of numbers. <laughs> I, I think Lisa's correct, it's 1561. in September, we're at 1560. Okay. And we were, we were older. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Nice job, Lisa. You get a prize. <laughs> I'm not sure we're still hitting our numbers. So. <laughs> yeah, we're getting more. Right that number. takes us to the next topic. Um, you guys have your budget reports in front of you. I'm sorry. My lab is not up for us yet. So they're the old reports. Um, I know they're not pretty and easy to understand. I will be bringing you December. They have promised me they'll have me up and running. So I'll bring you months then so you can look at every month. Um, we're at 3.1. We ended the year about 3.8. Um, I'll be bringing the year-end report to you once my lab is up. Um, and we've already dropped at 3.1. September is always a big month for payroll. Um, so I am kind of watching our budget a little more closely this year because of salaries. You have them there for general fund ASB capital projects, no bed, so that one all zeros, and then our TVF. Yeah. Expert at that class. But. And our 
Oh. How's that working out for you? Oh, PM. <laughs> okay. Right? Yeah. Okay. My, we took a budget class and like, yeah. That's what they've been saying. We finally learned what OPM was when you guys started on all this. Is that. I took another class yeah. to understand this. And yeah, well, I do understand it more, yeah. but still, it, is, uh, so much it is a lot of information. Yeah. yeah. We took a budget class for dummies and walked away feeling pretty smart, actually. So it's good. <laughs> Any questions? Okay. Yeah. Hopefully, when we have the new reports, any questions will be answered. I apologize. Okay. Did you come was... up at 1561? So. I did. <laughs> where do we or how do I find where we budget for what we return on our, or do we have it in here for our electric bus? The electric bus money has not come in. Oh, it's supposed okay. to be in this month. We finally got the approval. Okay. You'll see it in your November if we get it by the end of this okay. month. November. Then I was not, I was correct in not seeing it. Okay. Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay. That would be about 375000 if I remember right. I was looking. <laughs> okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay. That there, my friends. Oh, unfortunately, tonight uh, we have a student rep out that is under the weather and one that's lost a family pet. So uh, they're, not, they're not here this evening, unfortunately. Uh, and motion then, to excuse them. Are we, are we say that again? Do you, do you need a motion then, to excuse them? I think we skipped Chris. No, no. I, I just want to make that no. comment. Oh. Um, so we'll go ahead and have Chris do the superintendent report. Super. Hang on, I'm going to first have Mr. Clark start us off. We'll be starting on our winter sports. Great. Great. Right. It's pretty good. Yeah. So we have a full schedule. Winter sports are up in full force. We're kind of moving forward, so I'm pretty excited about we'll that. Start Monday. About halfway done. We at least started our first half of the month. On two. Um, we had a great uh, board conference. Um, I thought we had a great presentation. We've got a, we had the opportunity to present our ELMA initiatives and work at the Washington State School Boards Conference. Um, I think we had an hour and a half of questions following the presentation, so um, we almost couldn't get out of there. Would that be true? Yeah, that'd be true. Yeah, I kept creeping forward, you guys. You guys kept answering more and more questions. <laughs> So uh, we're pretty excited about the work that we're doing in Elma. We're very excited about the work and the excitement that's happening around, around the rest of the state on the work. I had the ability to, um, I got to every grade but first grade on Monday's late start. All of our teachers are doing all of, uh, like the work they're getting in place in our late start and aligning standards. Math standards have all been mapped out in line with proficiency scales. Now we're moving forward on the, uh, uh, ELA, our teachers are doing great work. Mr. Scroggins walked around with me. Um, I thought I was going to try to get to the elementary and high school, and then I got to second grade and then was scolded for having my vehicle in the bus lane. So I did not get to, <laughs> so I did not get to first grade um, because the questions were pretty rich. So now I need to make sure that at the next late start, I will be at first grade. <laughs> so I'll probably be at the beginning of our first grade class, and I'm apologetic if we have first grade teachers. Did not make it there, um, but the work and the questions were very rich. The work our teachers are pulling off in the alignment of our standards, um, and I think we're very close to having uh, a lot of teachers who are interested in flipping the switch on a lot of on our projects that we're doing here for our, our grading systems. So great, very good week. Good. I just want to make a comment real quick. <clears throat> um, one thing I learned at the conference was that. Um, well, prior to the conference, you know, we've been hearing about how Elma's moving quickly and people are worried and blah, blah, blah. And going to the conference um, and hearing that we're ahead of the game, that we are moving in a direction that not only the state, but the country is going in. I actually got a phone call from a girlfriend in Colorado asking, hey, what's this mastery-based learning? I just saw on our news that there's a school district down here that's doing it. I'm like, yeah, well, we're already there. So anyways, um, Kudos to you and to your crew for seeing the vision and, and moving this in the direction that I think we were all nervous about going. But um, after seeing this weekend, uh, I love that we're ahead of the game. I appreciate that. 
So, and like I said, it's uh, honestly, this is the work of Mr. Keating, who's mm -hmm. been leading the work for our district. Eric had to build all the data systems, our principals, um, Ms. Greg, Mr. Scroggins, leading the work on building out all the badge books, our, you know, leading out building the Allen Power system, working with our teachers, understanding standards. This has been two and a half years worth of work. Um, but uh, this administrative team and then the teachers that threw their hands up and said that they volunteer, Mark has quite the list of teachers that just said, we're willing to wade through and do this work. Um, without the people who are willing to do the work, this wouldn't happen. So, it's just pretty cool to see. Yeah, it, it is. Mm -hmm. I, I will say the class um, that you presented, um, we were thinking there would be 10 people at the end of the conference. It was actually a packed room was standing in the back and um, there were light bulbs coming mm -hmm. on everywhere. And um, it was exciting to see, although we need to have a, a flat mark that travels with you. You speak about them enough in the presentation. I think we can, we can have a visual for everyone. <laughs> you're a celebrity and you don't even know it. <laughs> mark floating head. Yeah, yeah it, it was impressive to watch people um, go, what? So uh, it, it's exciting, um, really good work. And I'm very excited that Elma's on the forefront of designing that. And just for the audience, Elma School District, our school district, is the only whole school district in the entire state of Washington. And last year, in January of 2021, the uh, State Board of Education passed a, uh, a law requiring that students now earn credit by based upon what they know. And then last spring, that was codified in statute in RCW 1308. So now it is in statute in Washington law that students grade, student achievement, everything is based upon what students can show that they know. And Mark, Greg's, Eric's like work, you're only because you're here, um, has been building out this system. So um, uh, as a school district, we're the only school district in the state now that has the back end infrastructure to make good on the new statute. So. What I found also pretty cool was that uh, McClary school board members were there to learn about it, and so was yeah. Montesano. Which was and nice they, yeah. to watch them and they all come have, to see what we were. Yeah, what we were. But doing. for for McClary, because they feed into our high school, yeah. I think it's a great thing that they are actually looking to push it themselves. So anyway, good work, all of you guys. Yeah, it's a job. I'll make a motion we adjourn the meeting. <laughs> like, How much more I had to stare? I'll, I'll second. I just like, want to make sure there wasn't any other or, further comments. So. I, I wasn't sure if we were in contents here. I will, I will stare you down. <laughs> that would have been your opposite speech, by the way. <laughs> okay. There's been a motion made and seconded to adjourn the meeting. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Meeting adjourned. And happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Safe travels if you go. Have fun with yeah. your families. Yes. Enjoy. Enjoy sure. the time off. Sure. Log off. Yes, you log off. You all would like to get into our business.